uh, thanks for coming along and being part of the rugby site with us. No problem. Nice to have you on board. Um, can you just give us a little bit of your coaching background? I'm a, a secondary school teacher by trade, um, and I got into coaching secondary schools, I'm uh, going to secondary school teaching to be a coach. It was lucky my father, who was at Auckland Grammar in the early 70s and 80s, was you know were around people like Crow and, and Great Batch and Fox and, and those people. So I grew up around those guys and, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to coach people like that. So I got into coaching when I went to secondary school teaching 2002. Tauranga Boys with Joe Schmidt who, who, who employed me as a, as a school teacher uh, and a coach. Um, easiest way to keep playing sport at that stage was, was to play Premier Cricket and coach Premier Cricket. So I, I coached um, First Eleven Cricket with my first couple of years as a, as a, as a coach. Um, so I was lucky to coach Kane Williamson and, and had a Tauranga Boys team which was nationally ranked. And when I retired from playing rugby in 2005, I decided I could coach footy from there. So. I've coached first 15s and, and uh, Premier, Premier Club Rugby and, and representative rugby right through to um, you know, the last 12, 13 years. Um, and I've been lucky to coach some really good sides at St Kennigan College and Hastings Boys High School and Southland Boys High School and the like, and, and lucky to have some good club teams as well. So, yeah, pretty eclectic mix, to be honest. It's fair to say that over the years in the different schools and clubs you've been involved with, you've had some pretty good cattle to work with. Yeah, fantastic cattle. Yeah, yeah, look, absolutely. Lots of, lots of All Blacks and and super rugby players and, and the like and it's and, and look that you know they've all the wonderful thing about that is that they all have very different nuances so there's no one thing that makes a player who you know, couldn't say this schoolboy was going to be an all black was destined to be because of this because they're all different and it gives you a really good insight into your coaching as well because you, you don't you don't want to close that off can you name some of the players yeah that you've coached that have sort of gone on to, to higher honours and, and what was it about those particular boys at schoolboy level that made them special? What skills, was it attitude, what was it? Yeah, I mean there were some big men, you know, like the offer Tonga Fussies and the, and the um, Patrick Tuipilotes were big boys, big guys, but, but Offa and Patrick were, were hard working. Offa Tonga Fussy was a, a, a Mangere College boy who, who, um, who was a loose forward. Uh, by trade and, and he turned into a prop at sort of 16, 17 years of age and, and, and he worked his butt off. The kid trained, trained so hard and, and, and he's an incredibly loyal guy and I think that that made part of him. He was really loyal to Mangere College and to his family and his roots and you know, he was fantastic there. Um, I'm trying to think of guys who you may know, Blake Gibson is, is another guy at the Blues and he was, uh, you know, he broke his leg in fifth form and Terrible spiral fracture, but he, he was work ethic, you know, he was always just going to work and work and work and work and work to be there. So I suppose that's probably the common trait of those guys. So they realise that evolution is an important part of working. So, you know, with video analysis and, and sites like yourself, you're gonna, you're gonna, people are going to know what you do um, and therefore you have to be able to evolve. And, and so those guys who can work and change who they are and what they do are, are pretty important. Offers one, you know, they'll work out head long body and he'll have to work really hard in those spaces. So, yeah, I think work ethic is, is pretty important. Tell us um, what makes a good coach. <sighs> yeah, I heard a really good thing from Raylene Castle yesterday, which was uh, she, she talked about un uncomfortable respect. Um, and, I, and I think that's, that's an important thing. I think you've got to be uncomfortable. Um, the minute you're comfortable and you're working um, in that space where you've got, you're surrounded by people who are all pushing in the same direction and all telling each, telling each other you're doing a great thing, you're probably not challenging yourself and challenging the, the people around you. I think coaching is about creating a challenging environment. Um, your best coaching sessions probably aren't where the drills go 100% perfect because that's where your best learnings are. So the ability to be uncomfortable um, and to, to ride with that, I think that's, that's pretty important. You had a lot of success with uh, school board teams. Can you tell us a little bit about your time with St, uh, St. Kennigan's and, and what made that such a special environment and a special team for Yeah, I mean, St. Kent's was an interesting one. I, I, I coached at Kelson Boys High School for two years and, and um, they're fantastic athletes and wonderful, wonderful school. Lots of, lots of really good players who went on to play for the Warriors and Blues and the like. Um, and then St. Kent's approached me about the possibility of coming on as a head of social sciences because I'm a school teacher and, and taking the first 15. And, I looked at that and they, they, we'd beaten them by 40 at, at Kelston and I thought well there's, there's an opportunity there to do something quite special so I think they were 10th in 2009 um, and we got in the 5th in 2010 in the Auckland competition which is incredibly robust and difficult competition it certainly was back then with the, you know, the, the Tamaki Colleges who had fantastic sides and, and, and Tangaroa College who had fantastic teams as well so you never had a rest up there. Um, 
And then 2011, we, we changed the format a little bit and changed, changed our, 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 um, the way in which we recruited and, 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 looked, and looked for players abroad and brought Seta Tamani Valu in um, from, from Fiji. Uh, and like, he was a revelation for us. Um, and along with a lot of the, the guys that we had previously at the school, we, had, we won our first Auckland 1A title uh, in 2011 which was the first title the school had won since 2001 and, and, and the 2001 team had Rokothoko and Kaino and Afoa. So we looked at the 2011 team and, and we thought, well, you know, maybe we've got the same sort of side that the 2001 team had. In 2012, uh, we went on and won a national title in 2012, uh, the first full one, which we were co-educational 2010 and 11. So 2012, we won the national title. In 2013, we won the, um, the Sanex World Championship. Uh, in, in Fukuoka in Japan uh, and at that stage I think we got through in 2013 to the national championship game against um, Hamilton boys and I think we'd had 50, 50 we were unbeaten for 50 odd games at that stage, 51 or 52, something like that until Bryn Gatton kicked the drop goal to beat us um, which he's done to a lot of people so I don't feel so bad now as I did back then but um, yeah that was a fun time and, and I think at that stage we'd sort of I'd reached a pinnacle with those kids and how much they were going to get at me so it was time to look for another challenge um, with other with, with clubs and, and provinces and, and uh, provincial teams and, and I was lucky enough in 2016 and 17 to get back involved with first 15s with Hastings Boys High School which again was a significantly different first 15 to, to Kelson both at Kelson and St Kent's um, you know, Dissol, three and four kids from, from Flaxmere and, and, and the surrounding Hastings area and they were just fantastic um, and, and a totally different side and love to see who will come out of that group, uh, national championship winning team and, and go on and be Tamni Valu or, or Edwards or, or Vetio and the like. So I think anyone that pays any attention to that competition, the school board competition in New Zealand would see that there is a very talented yeah. group of boys in that Hastings uh, set up. But the, the, the common denominator with success for the team that you've been involved in is you. What, what, are you, what have you done, do you think? What, what does it take to turn a side around that haven't been succeeding? Um, and, and this club, the mighty uh, Harold Boys <laughs> was a, is a classic example. Um, they were in the second division, or second division uh, 2016. Yeah. Uh, runners up in the in the Premier Division this year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I, I, I think to be honest, the more I get into coaching, you know, we can talk about the technical and tactical and, and being at the cutting edge of, of new technical ideas. And I think that's a byproduct of, of good environments and good relationships. I mean, ultimately, your life's about building relationships with people. Um, and coaching is significantly just a, a microcosm or, or a sports centre, a microcosm of life. So if you're going to be a good coach, you have to be able to build those relationships. And, and I think it's, it's probably genuine trust, genuine trust. There are a lot of athletes that will, will trust uh, the coach to a point, but that implicit trust of your coach or your environment is very important. So be able to say, oh, I know X athlete I know where he's come from, I know where he wants to go, I know his family background, I know about him, he knows about me and then when we get into these pressure times or those situations where he has to learn or grow, um, he respects me and I respect him and we can, we can create that growth. I think that's pretty important. Um, so many of us get tied up in the technical nuances and, and the next fad and the next thing but really as the game's been is 100 and whatever years old uh, and, and it will continue to change but the, the one thing that stays the same is building those relationships with those, with those people sure. and, and particularly you know men are just big boys you know and I'm still just a big boy uh, and, and so you really just want to be cared about and, and associated with so I think that's probably the biggest point I think. Yes I think it's, what you're saying is that there's a, a big emphasis put on culture around what you... Yeah yeah I like to dodge that C word yeah yeah um, because yeah, c- culture is organic Yep. Um, so, so every team I've been involved with has been significantly different. Kilston was a different beast and, and I wouldn't begin to try and dictate where the culture would be with Hastings Boys High School or, or, and or Huddles Boys Marist. But I think you, you, you grow that from your relationships. So as long as it grows out of something, I think quite often we try and plant the seed of culture or we try and put the tree in the middle and say this is what we're going to build our, our, our team around and, and it doesn't fit the environment, it doesn't fit the team that you're with. So 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, you're right. The, the word is culture, but I try and dodge that one. It is, it's building those relationships and building that, and, and you build it from one player to five players to 15 to 25 so that all of those people are on that, on that honest, honest train going to the right direction. And, it's one thing to have a have a club or a school where your your premier side or your first fifteen mm. is the pinnacle side within sure. that organisation, but it's very important to look beneath that and oh, look at your me. look at the next generation coming through. So schoolboy level, you need to be looking at what's coming in at, yeah. at the year nine or third form. Level. And working with it, yeah, look, it's becoming more prevalent, I think, in, in the ITN Cup space and, and and some of the more professional spaces because the, the competition is so uh, compacted now because of such a huge season and such a number of teams playing we get driven by we're only going to need these 28 players and we're going to need to do X, Y and Z and we've invested no time in the development leading up to, the, to those other players. I often yeah, I find very little do I ever say uh, they, they let us down because they didn't have the skill. It's very much easier as a coach in my opinion to be able to say I've invested the time two, three, four, six months, two years earlier in this guy and therefore he does have the skill. And if he doesn't have the skill, then it's probably my responsibility. So, yeah, I mean, look, part of the work at St. Kenning College was building up through there. So we, we had age group sides at St. Kent's that didn't play. So we had a lot of weight grade teams at St. Kent's when we arrived. And I say we, me and Ty Levere, who was, who was our outstanding coach as well. So we were successful at the under 85s and we were successful at under 65s, but we didn't have an under 15s team and we didn't have a second 15 team. So we were sort of hiding a little bit. So part of that was, was making sure those guys were competing at that level and, and being developed and worked with. So yeah, you're right, the underneath is, is massive. What advice would you give to a school or a, a club out there that are, are struggling and looking to sort of step things up a gear and, and, and get to a next level? Yeah, look, it's, it's time. It's time invested in the right areas. I mean, I think it's, sometimes it's very easy for us to, to do bulk and say we've, we've invested this time. I think time invested in skill, time invested in the appropriate condition, time invested in the, in the balance of those players going through makes a big difference. And so you, you've got to be prepared, uh, and look, it's a hard one, you've got to be prepared to invest that time. And, and if you're going to build those relationships, the players have to see that you're giving equally, if not more, than they are. So, yeah, I mean, look, I'm a father of four, and, and, and uh, my time to build those teams was, was given far more than, than, than to my kids, which was a, it's a hard thing to handle, but you do realise that, that those relationships and that time spent at the grassroots, at the, at the ground level of developing skill, and, and we're talking, you know, this is the whole way through tackle technique, uh, body shape and awareness, catch and pass, decision making, all those things are so prevalent. We didn't do anything significant. We had no patterns of play that were better than any other team. We just allowed guys to make decisions and have the appropriate skills to read the situation. So, but that only comes with time, you know. Ten thousand forehand to change a, you know, and that's the same. You know, we're going to have to do a thousand tackles on my left hand shoulder to make a small technical challenge and, and uh, change. Sorry, and, and that's important. So you, you can't substitute time. Unfortunately, there's no quick fix. You've clearly got a huge passion for the game, um, and you've got to you've got to love the game. I mean, it's yes, it's an absolutely. easy game to love, really. Who's been your inspiration? Who who do you admire as a coach that you yeah. look up to and go, actually, I really sort of like oh. what he does. I was around some really sort of foremost guys. I grew up around uh, at Auckland Grammar as a six, seven year old with um, John Graham and Graham Henry, um, uh, Steve Watts, you know, my father. The, the, those, those, those guys were fantastic in that space and I, I just wanted to be them. Um, and then when I got to high school, I, I was lucky to be around uh, Paul Gibbs, who was a, played for Central District Cricket, and Joe Schmidt, who, who was a military rugby player and aspiring coach. Um, and so those guys really drove me to work with young people because of the relationships they built with me and built with others. Um, and so when I left school, that's, that's, those are the guys I wanted to emulate. So I'm really lucky that I, I stay in contact with guys like Graham, uh, Graham Henry. Um, I stay in contact with, with um, uh, Joe Schmidt often. In fact, Joe texted me the other day and, and, and in his downtime, he's just a fantastic down-to-earth guy. But, you know, Joe will say, he's a guy from Woodville, uh, and, and he'll say that he, he's just about building relationships with people. And that's, he, he's got a fantastic skill at making people feel empowered. Um, but also making f people feel like they need to grow, and yeah, th those guys are fantastic, and, and I've been lucky to be around them, um, you know, and that's what I want to be for young people as well, be someone who's approachable in that space and be able to say, right, I want to build your skills and make you a better person, so 
Yeah, I've, I've been lucky. There's some great, some really great male role models, and I say that because we unfortunately are a male dominated game, particularly in New Zealand. But but I've been lucky to be through that through that process with those guys. We're very lucky on the rugby side to have one of the world's greatest coaches in Wayne Smith, and, yeah, and he's he's the same cut, you know, same sort of ilk. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and look, Wayne Smith wouldn't. Yeah, you work in similar environments, but Wayne, Wayne and Graham and, and, and uh, Steve Hansen will say they challenged each other and, and had these wonderful ideas around building good people. And, and look, that, yeah, as you said, you've, you've got some of the premier guys in the world. I've just been lucky to be around some of them. You know, We've been doing some filming with you over the last few weeks on a couple of series. Can you just give us a bit of a, uh, in a nutshell, just tell us what we're looking, going to be looking forward to? Um... Yeah, well, look. You know, I've been lucky. I've been in the Blues environment, in the Hurricanes environment, the Highlands and Southland, and I've been able to see all the changes and nuances and differences in, in areas. But the one thing I have sort of built over the last 15 to 18 years is I think you've got to have your own ideas in the game. Um, and I love the contact area of rugby. Um, I just think that that's, you know, that's the area that you see the most rule changes. World rugby and the referees are, are always working with the players and the coaches to, 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 to change that. That's the constantly evolving area. I mean, scrum's another one, but breakdown particularly. So for me, you know, like I got into coaching because I felt like it was a chess match. So if I move a piece here, what's going to change? And that's essentially what we do at Breakdown. So, you know, we develop a new technique at Breakdown and the referees say, hey, I wonder how that fits with the law and that changes the dynamics and the speed of the game. As soon as the speed of the game slows down or speeds up, defences get challenged or don't. So I think it all, it all builds around that contact space. Um, and the All Blacks are that. I mean, they have very fast contact ball and therefore they, have, they can challenge defences and, and, and therefore they can score tries. So, so I, I thought the best space for me, instead of copying what the rest of the world does, was try and have my own ideas around breakdown. So how I slow down ball, or how I steal ball, or how I create change at breakdown, or give my defence a bit more of a chance to, to operate, uh, depending on what we do at breakdown. So I think really what you're going to see is just some different ideas uh, at breakdown space and some different ways in coaching that. I, I do like to, to challenge guys with their body shape and the biomechanics. I am a, Cricket, you know, first class cricketer by background, so I'm very heavily in bio, invested in biomechanics and repetition of that. So there's a bit of that stuff in there, um, but really, I think it's just an idea, it's a way to say, here's some ideas, and, and where do you want to spring with it, and where do you want to go from that space? Um, and look, at, they are more genuinely mine, um, and, and some of the techniques and skills are. are are evolved, but I've always found that you know the best the best coaches are magpies. They, they find the shiny pieces and, and create their nest and then build their own nest from that. Not necessarily take all the shiny and then that's it. You do have to build your own nest. You do have to work out what works for you. So hopefully there's something in there that will work for you. And that, that ticks a box perfectly about our philosophy of what we do on our site is the fact that we have the Richard McCaws and the Sam Orbitums and the Eddie Joneses and Wayne Smiths and, and so on coaching similar areas of the game that you'll see on the videos, but they all have a different take on Correct. those individual skills. Breakdown's a great area. You know, if you take the body shapes, for an example, what, what works for, for Pocock and McCaw won't work for Brodie Retellick and, and uh, Sam Whitelock, but equally those guys have, you know, Retellick has just as much effect in the breakdown space as somebody else, but he uses his body significantly different than Pocock would. Um, and I guess that's the same with coaching. You know, you, you have your different skills and attributes. You, if you go and try and use uh, someone else's skills and attributes, you, 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 it's not going to work. So I guess you take those bits and, and appropriate them to your coaching body shape, per se.